Hey there, board gamers. Today, we're gonna to talk about some painting. I'd like to welcome you guys back to the channel. If you're new here, please alpha strike that like and subscribe button. And if you're a returning viewer, I appreciate you being here to have my back. Appreciate you having my six. Thank you for being an awesome, awesome lance mate, star mate, whatever the case may be for you. I appreciate you being here to help support what I do. Before we get started today, I'd like to give a big shout out to Fortress Miniatures and Games for sponsoring the channel. If you're looking for anything or everything Battletech related and some of your hobby painting needs, make sure you check Bobby out over at Fortress. Big sponsor of the channel, helps me do what I do. In addition to that, I'd like to give a big shout out to everyone over at Patreon. It's helping to do that little extra to help support what I do. Without you guys and Fortress's contributions, I wouldn't be able to continue to make or continue making these videos, and I appreciate all the support. All right, guys, so uh, today I've got Eric Berg with me uh, from the Instagram. I'll try and remember to put his, his handle up here. Uh, he is a North Carolina native and uh, got into painting, and in today's video, I kind of want to talk about his painting experience, uh, how he got into painting, and uh, his CSO experience, because uh, some of you guys may or may not know, I don't know if the posts have gone up yet, but he just got accepted to the CSO team, uh, or group, or whatever they're, they're referring to us as, the, the cool painter people, and I thought it would be cool to have him on here to talk about his experience, so you want to say hi to the people? What's going on, guys? Hi. Hey, cool. Uh, so, <laughs> to start out, uh, I think we discussed off-camera talking about uh, kind of your history that led up to painting. Uh, I think you said you wanted to talk about that. So. Yeah, so, so I'll try to, try to keep it short. So when I was little, maybe seven, eight years old, right? Um, you know, parents used to take me to the mall. I'm 39, so I'm like really old now. And now right? we're young. Yeah, 39 <laughs> is young now. <laughs> 39 is the new 49? Is, yeah. that, is that how that works? <laughs> so, um, and uh, I used to go to the place called Babbage's, right, in the mall. And it was a bookstore, and they had the, all the technical readouts in the mall. So I used to sit Indian style on the floor and just like read those, like just cover to cover, stare at the different uh, illustrations that the guys Physical did. media. Physical. Yeah, not digital guys. Oh, like, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, back yeah, when books were real. Yeah, so not PDFs. <laughs> it was like a legit book that you had to buy. Um, and uh, parents wouldn't let me buy it because they were expensive and I was, you know, seven, eight years old. So anyway, I would go and read those. Um, so part of that is uh, where my battle tech interest comes into play, but I also used to play like Mech Commander. Mech yep. Commander 2, uh, Mech Warrior Mercenaries, I think. Is there a second one? Uh, yeah, there's like four, right. four like, Mech Warrior games, yeah. four five. Yeah. Um, I think that, uh, so five of them, I think that's, uh, that is probably a, a very common um, a thread for people who got into Battletech. Yeah. It's probably the video games. Yeah. Uh, the books is probably one thing, and that's got a bunch of people that's probably yeah. the older generation who started with it. Uh, but video games, for sure, like that was my experience, too. Yeah. Mech Commander Gold was one of the first Battletech right. things I did. Yeah. And I, I, I played a pirated version of that because someone gave it to me. <laughs> uh, back in yeah. like 98, 99, a friend of mine in Fayetteville, his dad was like a, a tech guru. Yeah. And he hands me this, this disc that was white and it said Mech Commander on it. And the bottom was this crazy color because like I'm used to like silver bottom disc. And it was like blue or something. Yeah. Booted in the computer and Battletech fan ever since. So yeah, it's super cool. I have since bought things for that, guys. Don't bootleg stuff. <laughs> but uh, in 98 or 99, when, you know, MP3s and Napster and stuff was a thing. That kind of happens. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's cool. I love. I I just I fell in love with that part, and then to see the tie-in. I know there was some of the unseen stuff because yep. uh, I used to love May Cross yep. and Gundam growing up too. So I did do a little bit of Gunpla. So like part of my painting experience comes from that. Yeah. Um, and then from the, the May Cross stuff and from the Robotech, which was what it was called in the U.S. Right. Yeah. Um, so I did that, and um, all throughout growing up, my my grandfather, who's gone now, my dad and I, my brother, we used to restore cars yeah. as well. So um, I had a little bit of familiarity with painting, but just like, you know, like not little, little airbrushes. We're talking like, you know, like big, yeah, big you know, stuff. big spray yeah. guns for, for cars and stuff like that. So um, I didn't really paint any cars that was li really left to my, my grandfather um, and to my dad. I did a lot of the smaller detail yeah. work. So I used to do interior work or, or small parts and did stuff like that. Did you do any like, like pen lining? Um, Isn't that a thing that you guys do, like a little paintbrush? Yes and no. So I, I don't remember any of the cars that we ever did doing like any of that that handwork with those really long paintbrushes. Yeah, I've watched some stuff, it's really yeah. nuts. I'd be afraid to do it. Yeah, it's super cool stuff. Um, I never did any of that. It was more just like all the little detail work, like cleaning parts, painting those parts, um, you know, just all the little refining I'm gonna show kind of up. stuff. Yeah, so so part of my part of my um, background comes from that too. Okay. In regards to the painting as well, um, I guess it's pretty recent, right? Because yep. I've only been painting for like, I would say maybe a year and a half, Yeah, I guess, like at least at this scale. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I really, really got into it from uh, Mech Warrior Five and BattleTech, like the computer games. Brain schemes, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So fantastic game um, because you could go into like your captain's quarters, right, and you could like change the color yeah. on the atlas, right. And I was like, oh man, that's cool. Yeah. Can I can I do that? Like real life, can I do that? Yeah. And that and that part of that kind of segued into that too. So 
uh, my first model was a 3D printed uh, Timberwolf that I used. Yeah. And uh, I, I painted that in, funny that you mentioned it, uh, Mech, uh, Mech Commander Smoke Jaguar colors. Mm, nice. So I painted it in red. And I was like, yeah, Red Timberwolf. Like, that to me was like the iconic Timberwolf was, was the bad guy. Is that Timberwolf the first mini you've painted ever? Or have you painted minis before? Yeah, now? that was okay. the first one ever. The first one. So, Battle yeah. your first one. Yeah. A, a lot of the viewers, their, their first uh, jump in, at least viewers that are probably familiar with me, probably start with something like 40K. Yeah. Um, Battle Tech players predate 40K generally because it came out ahead of that. But the new wave that may have stumbled on it now probably started with that. Okay. And they've probably like got into this and they had experience painting different stuff. So, it's interesting to be talking to someone who's like a newer painter. That this is the first thing they've ever touched. Yeah, because yeah. most people I know, the first like everyone's played 40k. Well, maybe not you, but most yeah, people have played. <laughs> <laughs> most people, uh, yeah. it being the biggest game. So it's interesting to see a progression on this because I feel like a lot of artists take what they've learned from 40k, bring it over to BattleTech, but they've started with large stuff. So you have like a Space Marine, which is roughly the same size, but then right. like an Imperial Knights. So you're taking mm -hmm. their version of a robot but painting something that's two inches tall. Right, right. Um, so seeing the different techniques. Yeah. So like if you were going the reverse and you were ever painting something big and you were like, hey, I painted this Marauder, it looks sweet. Yeah. I just want to paint this giant $150 Imperial right. Knight from 40K. The yeah. techniques would be the same, larger canvas, so it'd be interesting to go the other way if that ever happened. But yeah. Yeah. gameplay-wise, Biotech's my jam. Right. So. Yeah, I'm the same. I mean, I don't... I, I'm not planning on boomeranging anytime yeah. soon. So no. <laughs> I, love I played this a lot of games, stuff. but yeah. <laughs> yeah, 40K I'm done with. I've got this and a couple other things, but like the other games that for me I play, um, yeah. and now I guess we're, we're kind of segueing a little bit into different right. art things uh, that might interest you or other people. Um, so I've got other couple of games I play, like Battle or not BattleTech, <laughs> uh, of course. Um, but like Star Wars, like Legion, it's yeah. a different thing. But I'm not painting mechs; I'm painting like organic human stuff. So it's right. a different aesthetic. But the big thing that I think is important if you're looking for like a um, a different change for art uh, to to like cleanse your palette, a bust, which I think that is something I would highly recommend you yeah. try. Uh, if you don't do it at some point, that may be a, like here's a holiday and you've just been given something that to right. encourage you to paint, because yeah. like that's some that's some crap that I would do to someone. Yeah. <laughs> um, but to give myself a palette cleanser, um, I'll go from painting a mech and I'll be like, I'm just the monotony of it. Like, I feel like I'm good at it, but then I get stressed out and I'm like, I'm not right. getting that growth, which we talked about off camera, like yeah. the hobby yeah. growth. Um, I'll grab a bust and you've got like what would normally be a full mech, you know, a little guy, two inches tall, whatever, you got all the details. You get just a little excerpt of a guy. So it'll be like a, this guy I'm working on now is a, um, uh, a wizard. And it's just like his hands and his head and his hat, but not his full body, but it's right. blown up. So like, in, where this I'd be painting a lens, on him I'm like painting an eyeball yeah. and trying to get the iris and the reflection of the light. Yeah. So it's a different form of art. And for me, when I get something like that and I finish it, I feel like it's reinvigorated, reinvigorated me to try this stuff because it's a different scale. And I've like, okay, I've taken everything I've learned from this and all the little brush strokes and the blending. I've done it on something that feels like a high-end art piece yeah. that's for display. Now what can I do here and like to push the yeah. growth back and forth? So if that's something you haven't tried. I think you would also excel at it. And there's also some busts that have... Similarities to this that aren't just organic, you know, like if you want armor or something. Right. But uh, I think it's a nice segue if you ever try something that's a yeah. non-game-related uh, piece. So. Well, there's skills too, right? I mean, yeah. it sounds like I've never painted skin. Yeah. So it sounds yep. like those things are very, very different. Yep. Um, and uh, cutting you off for a second, sorry. When you're talking about, uh, I just thought about it because the whole point of this was to like interview someone else who got into CSO. Yeah. Um, talking about the busts, I follow Rashido. Um, I believe his name's Kevin. Yeah. Um, he paints busts as well. And I feel like he'll take yeah. a bust. He'll push it and he'll do like talk, take all of his techniques and all the art classes and stuff he's taken. Yeah. He'll push it. Then you'll see him do a mech and he's doing the right. same things on a different scale. But like this larger canvas is where he gets to try all the techniques and then smaller ones for CSO, he goes and does other things. Yeah. So that's a nice back and forth to change up. So yeah. I think that's kind of probably encapsulates more what I was getting at. He did he did a Raphael Ninja Turtle yep, that did. I saw. And I think mm -hmm. he was on a different interview that I happened to run across on YouTube as well. And it was beautiful. Yeah. He had like that Namantuck metal on the side mm -hmm. and he had some, I think, object source lighting yep. on his, on his, maybe on his leg. Oh, he does a lot so, of that stuff. Yeah. He did mm -hmm. a lot of really fun stuff yep. on that. I had a conversation with him once and uh, he uh, came up with that idea from what he told me of that OSL kind of going in the, yep. in the jets and mm -hmm. in the heat sinks, which is yep. what, I, what so, I kind of got the inspiration from. That'll but. give us a good segue. So uh, is this the one you're talking about? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So now we're going to have yeah. you do some camera work and show us what you're talking about with like the inspiration for like the OSL and stuff from Rashida. And you have an example yeah. of a mech you tried this on, yeah? So I do. So um, painting inspiration for this, other than, you know, we were talking about painting, mm -hmm. um, you know, little guys too, but also, you know, YouTube. Yeah. Um, you know, I stumbled across, you know, all different kinds of videos yeah. and all kinds of different techniques. Mm -hmm. So like Rashido's technique, um, I saw some of that, um, but it was done by B1B Flyer yep. on mm -hmm. the CSO website. Yep. Um, and then the stuff that, that you did with your kind of P work. And uh, I also, you know, drew from that as well when I started getting into it. So it was mostly you um, and then, you know, B1B. And then there, like I said, it was there uh, a video that uh, that gentleman read piano okay. as yep. well. Mm -hmm. Right. 
um, that also had some really good tips. So yeah. I kind of brought all that together, um, you know, to bring it into here, see if I can get it. Sorry, guys, I'm not really. This is the I first time we've had this. minis Sorry. on screen that's not me holding them. <laughs> I, I, I set it up, we got the X there so you can have as minis. Yeah. Uh, for us, it's a small view screen. For them, this, this is going to come out the size of the computer screen. Gotcha. So they, they'll, they'll be able to see good. Uh, and if there's something really specific, we can zoom in on it, but I think they can probably see pretty yeah, good I here. Think so too. Um, so yeah, so I did the OSL on that. I did the OSL, uh, you know, on the on the little car that got lasered in half. Yeah, that's one of yours. It is. Uh, it's one of the civilian DRD, cars from yeah. DRD. Uh, quite a few of the CSO Same guys. The road guys. That. Mm -hmm. So we had that, um, and then uh, you know we got some of the the OSL and the heat sinks yep. on the PPC on the arm. As the, well. the thing, uh, as, as one of the insiders for CSO, uh, seeing these submissions um, uh, posted on the website, the feedback that he got for that, whether they shared all of it or not, I don't know. Um, the heat sink glows on the rear. Generally, when you submit a CSO photo, it's pretty much the front of the model. The rear doesn't ever get shown on the yeah. website. He sent 360s, so like four photos from each different angle. Uh, he got a lot of feedback on the vent glows being really cool, but on CSO's website, you never see them. So if you ever get an opportunity to see this stuff in person, look for those details on the rear of the mech because they are there. Um, yeah, and then... You know, it, it. You've got the, the logo as well. Like yeah. The so unit. the freehand, right? On yeah, the freehand. Yeah. yeah, the DCMS. I I didn't have any decals, so I just kind of. Yep. Kind of rolled with it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the other things so, I think uh, yeah. would be important to point out was uh, as Eric here showing his his pieces. Um, when if you're comparing anything he's done to anything you've seen me do, his attention to his basing is 100 percent different than mine. Um, I'm real lazy, and I make it look good enough, um, and I focus real on the model. He's got really good models, and then puts that same effort into the basing. So as each one of these comes up, you're going to notice some great attention to detail, and yeah. that's an area that, for me, if I'm looking for growth, that's an area for inspiration, but he's already doing it. So it's like when you're giving someone feedback, that's an area we, we don't have to say anything about. But I think for you guys, it's important to look at it because it's, it's wild. Um, and each one of these that you've got here is a, a little bit different. Yeah, it is a little bit um, different, yeah. I don't know when you get to this one. I don't know if that one – was that in your second submission for CSO? No, Only so that was one? my first one. Yeah, like um, – yeah, I. The five that I originally submitted, let's see if I can shuffle yeah, yeah. them on here. So yeah, we'll zoom that out these were bit. the, so going from number one to number five, this was the first one I did. Um, the uh, Crockett? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, the Crockett yeah. in SLTF colors. So there's some craters on there. I know um, that was one of the things that really got me into it too, is you had a, like a fan submission on your YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I, I sent a couple of miniatures um, over you. And I remember he said, oh, yeah, little craters on that broader. Yeah. And there's, like, blood spots in there. And yeah. Yeah. That was for... Poor, um, poor civilians got stomped on and mortared, unfortunately, on, on the base yeah. of that model. <laughs> it was, uh, like, 2023. Was that yeah. the grinder box? Yes, yeah. exactly, mm -hmm. for Nova. Um, and then, you know, on the second one, um, I ended up doing a little, like, a mountain scene. I didn't go with a larger uh, base on that. Um, and then, you know, the, the third one here, the Highlander, um, which is good old Ronda. Yeah, the big thing on this one is, uh, so you've got some larger bases here for the larger yeah. mechs, and this one really, I, I didn't notice until he mentioned it, um, the jump jet plumes with that larger base just helps make it a scenic piece. Um, for gameplay purposes, it yeah. uh, doesn't fit in the X's quite as well for classic, but for Alpha Strikes, it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Uh, and I'm glad we've rotated to the back because in person, the jump jet plumes look way better than in the photos. So there's some details you get here, they just, they don't translate well, yeah. and this looks really good. Yes, yeah, so you got some OSL on that as well, and mm -hmm. then a little, little antenna, and... I freehanded. Uh, whoops, sorry guys. Where, where am I going? The, the, <laughs> he, the heavy metal uh, yeah. writing on the arm and stuff like that. So just those little things. Some of those things didn't come out on the photos, um, and then the striping on the arms and the and the shoulders and the legs. So that was the third one, and then my fourth one. Yeah, this so, one he's you know, already awesome. shown. We just showed that, and then um, the fifth one I did the basing on this one. I went with like a um, a beach scene. You also made the backdrop. We don't have any backdrops here. No. Um, I don't know if you posted it. I'm, again, I'll try and put this on the the chan or the uh, description here uh, for his uh, Instagram. Uh, if he's got photos, you should check it out. The whole backdrop for this is wild. Um, the the uh, water effects and stuff here, like he's got a whole backdrop where like a third of it is just water, and this dude's standing like right there at the beach, and that looks so good. And it might not translate on camera, but that looks like water. It's awesome. I used uh, Green Stuff World. Yeah. So and that that stuff works out really well. It's Green Stuff World water, and um, you get it on there. What I did first is I blended the blue. Mm -hmm on there um, with paint and then um, you do that green stuff world stuff on top and you kind of mold it into the waves that you like and then once that's done then uh, I just kind of slightly dry brushed and edge highlighted the tops of the waves right because like in, white foam right on, yeah yep. exactly like right on the beach right you've got the waves that'll curl up at the top right yep. before they hit the beach mm -hmm. right so I kind of wanted to give it give it that vibe and then what I ended up doing was making it a little bit darker um, 
on the edge there too because it simulates like the water and the damp sand right before it transitions in, into dry sand once you get yeah so so that's something that i really love yeah on um, i love painting the models but i also do equally love painting the bases yeah. too because i really do think that the base will tell a story yep. along with the model. Yep. So you'll have the color and the unit designations yep. and stuff like that. But you also look at the base too and you're like, oh yeah, look, this dude's on the beach and he's looking for pirate treasure. Or this, you know, this guy is in a town, um, you know, you know, popping away at bad guys and whatever the case yep. may be. Like it just it, it, it throws you into more immersion, yep. right? And that's kind of what I like about it is it it kind of draws you into a story, yep. which is really nice. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think so, that's oops, uh I'm sorry. Uh, definitely some um, of the important aspects too and the basing can almost be half of it it helps tell the story and for yeah. that guy on the beach in particular um that one's probably my favorite base that you did <laughs> i appreciate it man. um so you said these yeah. are the first five you submitted these are the first five yep. yep so um these are the first five um this guy i got some some good feedback from um so i don't know if you can see it oh, these thanks, out and we'll yeah. get we'll get him um, zoomed in so we get close-ups here so so this dude here there we go okay so you see how he's a pirate Skull on the back. That's one of your decals too, by the way. It's a DRD. Decal. Nice. Um, Big old plugs. Yeah. <laughs> Why decals, guys? Um, <laughs> so I wanted this to simulate black warriors from the Circinius Federation, but I wanted them to be disguised as 12th Regulan Hussars from House Marek. And I thought in my brain, I was like, yeah, like they're out kind of between both of those areas, right? Yeah. They're kind of near the Lear and Co or the, uh, um, House Marek and House Steiner. Um, so I, in my mind, it made sense. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, Black Warriors did not exist at the same time yeah. as uh, 12th Regulan Hussars. Because I think they came right after, uh, I think, what, are they, are they that, that word that I can't say on YouTube? Um, There's so, a lot of words we can't say. Start, <laughs> starting with a J. Um, Jade Falcons? Or <laughs> Jerks? Or uh, yeah, Dark Age. Is it Dark, is it Dark Age? Dark Age. Did they come out during Dark Age? Who? The uh, 12th Regular Hussars. Oh, I have no idea. They were part of... They were part of if it's not Wolf's Dragoons and, and Beta Galaxy Clan <laughs> Wolf's, they, nothing, nothing exists okay. to me. <laughs> my, my lore knowledge so, is very minimal. It's like, I, you're the expert here. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we're, we're in trouble. Um, so, um, so half of that feedback was, um, was from that. And then the other half was, well, hey, um, they're supposed to have a uh, camo. Yeah. Like a camo, like brown and tan camo pattern, which um, I, I goofed up on. When I when I did that, and I was like, ah, there's this. He feels too good too. To, to redo. Yeah, like, I, I, this is a complete piece. I'd rather I yeah. would have just started over. That, and that's exactly what yeah. I did. I was like, there's no way that that I want to kind of mess with this. And yeah. I, I like the way it works. Um, and if we play any games with it, it's going to stay that way. Yep. I, just, I, I love too. the way it looks. Mm -hmm. um, so I ended up repainting another model, and I ended up doing this guy here. So this was second um, submission. This is part of my second submission, correct? So for uh, everyone who's who's following, if you do CSO submissions. Uh, Got to do five entries, and at least one of them has to be a camo pattern that's not represented on the website. So he showed his first five. Um, the this guy here, uh, Pirate Bro, um, got replaced, and this is one of the second wave of five. So some of these that he had up here, he did touch up and uh, resubmit. This is the replacement. Exactly. So so on this one, um, you know, you can see that it is twelfth Regulan Hussars, right? You've got that brown and tan camo, you know, with the House Marek symbol, um, and then you've also got you know, the guns, right? And that's, and that's what I was talking about, about telling a story, right? Yeah. You know, um, I took this barrel from a, uh, a model that uh, DRD also makes for Ares. Um, oh, okay. So okay. if you know what from it is. From the Banshee 2 scene? Yeah, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. So yep. good eye. Um, and, I've seen uh, enough of that model. I should know. <laughs> should have like PTSD level so, flashbacks. <laughs> so, and I wanted to give it a story of, hey, this dude, he, he's got kind of like a camo, a mountain camo pattern, yeah. right? Um, and he's stomping around in the cliffs in the canyon somewhere, and he's running over maybe mechs from from fights and battles that have yeah. happened like decades ago, and he's looking around for for something, right? At least that's what my mind was thinking. And then I, I put another little glove or a hand yeah. on the back too, and it's all worn and stuff like that, and you know some cork board. Right. Is this uh, this the legendary Carlisle uh, Marauder? No. Okay. So so feel it, feel it. Oh, this is a metal one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. So this one is the one that Iron Winds came out with not too long ago yep. when they were doing re-sculpts of um, some of the stuff they were yep. doing, and um, they give you the option 
of either making it as a, uh, I think it's a 3R or a 5M variant, right? Mm -hmm. So you got the, the old 3R and then the 5M, which is a little bit different. You've got the, um, I'll go kind of through a little bit of yeah. why I painted it like this. Mm -hmm. So um, Merrick doesn't use PPCs a lot, right? Because they don't have factories, mm -hmm. right? Um, so this variant has two large pulses, two medium pulses, and then LBX-10, right? And, nice. and Iron Winds does a really nice job of giving you a larger barrel that you could put on yeah. top of the so model. simulates the different Exactly. Yep. So, and I love, um, I do love the legendary variant. Yeah, because he had right? a wider stance. Exactly. Uh, and the other one's kind of like walking with his legs closed. Right. And I didn't, I didn't catch the weight of it when yes. we picked it up. Yeah. Exactly. So, so you get that wider stance on it, you know, and, and then, you know, he's got his, you know, his guns out, mm -hmm. like, you know, parallel to the deck, you know, getting ready to, to, you know, smoke whoever's coming by. Um, and, uh, I used your trick as well. Um, to make that camo. So I pre-shaded oh. it. And then um, after I got the pre-shading done, um, some, of, some of these, I like to experiment with contrasts yep. as well as standard acrylics because yep. I don't think there's really a wrong way no. to paint. There's a, um, um, never uh, uh, the way, there's always a yeah. way. Yeah. So, so that's a little bit of a hybrid of two different kinds yep. of paints. So I, uh, I used a skeleton hoard on that to kind of get the brown in there mm -hmm. and then you know vibrant, more vibrant, less vibrant. And then what I did was um, I silly puttied it. Yep, silly putty. So, I don't know if I've showed it on the channel, but yeah. I've been doing that for years. <laughs> That's the way to do camo. Yeah. So so silly puttied it like you know really yep. really thin yep. little little strips, and then I would wrap it around here, almost kind of like um, the uh, Grace and Carlisle. Yep. Right. The Great Illusion. Um, yeah. Except brown and tan. Right. Yep. Exactly. But but what I did was you can either take a paintbrush. Or you can take like an eraser or, or something that's soft that's not going to scratch the first coat that you put down. And then I put little pieces of Silly Putty in between and I smoosh mm -hmm. them and I smear them around in different places. And, and then I shot, um, I don't know if that's XV88 from Citadel or if that's, um, uh, it's some kind of tan. I, yeah. I just can't remember what it is right now. Um, and then I spray that over and... Uh, there's a lot of anxiety about yeah. about that before I peeled it off. Yep. I was like, "What is?" But once this you start look peeling, like? it's really fun. That's the if you guys have ever done any masking, yeah. the moment you peel the mask off, it's like Christmas because you're seeing it. Yeah. Like if you get it right, you know you got it right, and it feels good. If you don't, it sucks. Yeah. But usually, like it's fun peeling it off because it comes yeah. to life immediately. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was really wild when I took that off. I was like, "Oh my gosh, look at that!" Um, and it was really cool. Yep. So um, I think I preface with all of these, by the way, with, with painting them, um, a lot of the work is really about like the foundation yeah right like like making sure that the panels are smooth yeah. and the lines are good um and there's there's a lot of green stuff that are because i had to do the jump chest i forgot to mention that yeah. so the other part about the 5m variant is that it's jump capable as well so ah, i see um and those don't um they're not attached when yeah. you buy it so you have to glue those on so when you glue them on you know, there's a little bit of a gap, like panel gaps, yeah. right? So, so you kind of got to go in there, put some green stuff in there, sand it down, yeah. and then go from there. So, a lot, a lot of the work is that that foundational, like body work, I guess you could say, yep. before you actually shoot the paint. Yep. Talk about that in cars too. Like ninety percent of the job when you're doing a paint job, it's body work. Yeah. Like when you're sanding everything down, making sure everything's yeah. super smooth. So, um, and then uh, yeah. So, so you got you got uh, this bro here. Uh, which was replaced with the Marauder Correct. for um, your second submission. Um, the other four, did you resubmit these? I did. Do um, we want to talk about like um, what the issue was the first time and what you might have changed for the yeah, second yeah, time in your course. process. So yeah. um, for any of you guys who are interested in getting a CSO, um, as you go through the, the uh, submission prog or process, you're going to submit photos. Um, all the artists are going to have a, um, a moment to respond to those on like a forum. They're going to give... Um, Hopefully feedback, some don't, <laughs> hopefully they do, because uh, that feedback is then shared with you to let you know like what you could do better or what you could do for growth. And in this case, Eric's got uh, four of his original five that he resubmitted because they were already right to the mark and he had to do some tweaks, whether that was updates on the model or just doing better photography. Um, and I think in this case, it's important for him to be able to talk about what he did to get these uh, for the second submission. So if you guys are doing this, you kind of have an idea what to prep for. Like yeah. if you want to go through this process, uh, you have to understand that they're probably going to find things at fault with the first submission and they want to see what you're going to do um, to fix that or rectify it in the second one. And again, in his case, one of the guys just can't rectify it. So paint a new model. Yeah. These four, 80%, they were, they were really close to the finish line. So yeah. uh, in this case, I'll hand it back over to you and let you talk about what you may or may not have yeah. done. So, so you want me to talk about like uh, the CSO process from like my perspective? Sure. Yeah. Beginning? Like anything you so, want to add in, um, I think it's important because uh, there are plenty of people who watch you. I feel like think it's something they can't do, 
but want to do, or they might think I'm not good enough. And to that, I'll, I'll, I'll drop an explicative here. I'll say that's bullshit. Um, if you want to do a thing, try and do a thing. Anything that um, you're willing to practice, you can do. That's Bob Ross. You can you can take that one to the bank. Um, but I think he said um, yeah. uh, talent isn't a, a acquired thing. Um, so you have to, to practice anything. Really, anything you're willing to practice, you can do. Uh, and for the CSO stuff, don't worry about it. Um, if you want to submit it, and then if you submit and you don't happen to get in, um, don't take that to heart. Um, try and do stuff and resubmit. Uh, and I think it's important to shine a light on what you did because yeah. you went through it. And he handled the critique way better than I did. Yeah. Um, I didn't go to social media and rage, but like it's hard to take critique because you feel like mm. I'm not good enough. Why even bother? Well, maybe you take that critique and you grow, which he handled it way better. Yeah. And he just it wasn't even like taking on my chin. He was like, okay, this is what I need to do. So for right. some people it's personal, for some it's not. Yeah. I think showing your process um, you know, here on the channel for others who might uh, watch it may give them inspiration to want to do it. And you should do it if that's something you want to do. Yeah, I think it's I think it's worth it, especially if you're, like, you're a huge fan. I mean, it, I think it's good to, to think about why you want to do it. Yeah. Right? So like the background of that, okay, do I yeah. want to do this because, um, you know, I, I want the notoriety or the yeah. fame. I just want or, to put CSO right? next to my name. Or, or yeah. do I want to do this because I love this IP yep. and I love robots and I love painting? Um, or do I want to do this because um, it's cathartic experience for me? Yep. Right. So for me, the the second and the third one were the big reasons why I wanted to do it. So you look like um, the IP and so the cathartic I love, experience. Yes, I love yeah. the IP and I love the fact that that it for me painting is relaxing yep. to me. So. Um, you know, it's it's to me a stress release, yep. and and I know there's a lot of guys out there that you know that deal with PTSD. You know, mm -hmm. I got a lot of veterans, right, that that are into this IP because it's military based, yep. right? And um, I don't have PTSD. I was a, I was a contractor. I was an active. <laughs> yeah. I was a military contractor, but I, not not in the sense of like you know like one of those three letter agency contractors. Mm -hmm. Like I I worked overseas yep. in a hospital. Um, they have contractors for like mm -hmm. everything, right? Um, so, but for a lot of guys. It is, it is a relaxing experience for them, and that's one of the reasons why I decided to go down that road. I want to interject so. on the, the, the PTS topic, because uh, anyone who watches my channel probably gets that mental health's a big thing that I, I talk about, whether it's overtly in your face or it's covertly behind the scenes, it's a theme. Um, I've got quite a few friends who uh, are in the military or have been in the military, and mental health has always been a thing I try and talk to them about. Some talk about it, some don't. I think some of it's a kind of a macho man uh, mentality where like it, they've been beaten into them. you got to be a badass, you got to be this. You can't show emotion. And for some people that works and some people it doesn't. I think the thing when it comes to minis and art that I find the most fascinating is that when you get someone to take that moment to do this, um, what's cathartic for me ends up being cathartic for them. And we can share this experience where we're both having a, a release and relaxing session and we've been through different walks of life. So this is yeah. the area where we get to merge. And like, I may not be able to share your experience, but this art is a way that helps me feel good and helps you feel good. And we're able to kind of connect through this. Yeah. And then I find that guys that I've had do this stuff and talk to me about it, they start to open up because they feel relaxed and comfortable. And now you've got yeah. someone who was in the desert getting shot at and someone who was in college and got to play video games all day. We're now coming together for something that's mutual. And then that little bit of common ground gets us talking about things and not everything. But I feel like it's important to, to realize that like this person who did this crazy difficult job and me who didn't, we do have things we can overlap on and talk. And I think for veterans in particular, it lets them know you're not alone in the world. There are people that yeah. can't relate to your experience, but we can relate in some way and, and be there for you. And mental health's a big deal, and that's something yeah. I think yeah, that is, is important. Yeah, I totally, I totally agree with you. Yeah. So, so going into this, you know, segueing into you know, like taking critique, taking yep. criticism. I mean, you know, working working for the military, working for some some rough and tumbled folks. Like, you know, I've had my fair share of getting my butt chewed out yeah. before. So for me, it's like, <laughs> you know, some of that, you know, I'm kind of used to it. Um, but also, you know, I think looking at it from, hey, they're not, they're not critiquing your work just to, you know, shut you down or to, to just be rude. Now, you're going to get a couple of outliers, yeah. you know, and, and every bunch of people, yeah. I'm sure. Um, but I did not have that experience. Yeah. And, you know, I use this experience to grow. It's like, hey, yeah. what, you know, what could I do better? What can I, what can I refine? What am, what am I not seeing, right? Because everybody looks through life through a different lens, yeah. right? So, so there's stuff that I've done on here that I think is cool. And then other people are like, well, you know, like, it's not really, like, just like, for perfect example, that Zeus, like, I thought that was the bee's knees. Oh, yeah, I think right? it's great. And then, you know, it turned out that it was completely not canon and not camo. So, you know, taking that, like, okay, well, if that's, if that's the case, you know, I'm not, I'm not an expert. I don't know everything. You know, let me fix it. And, yep. I, you know, I'll go from there. Yep. Right. So, you know, I, 
it's hard, right? Because you put your work, you put your, your butt out there yep. and, and you put effort in your life into these models. And they're like, after a while, some of these, you do so much work on there and they're like your babies, yeah. right? They're like your yep. kids. And then it's like somebody insulting your kid, like, hey, you don't like that edge highlight? I like that edge highlight. How yeah. dare you, right? Yeah. You know? I know my kid's uh, not the best yeah, wrestler exactly. on the team, but my kid's the best wrestler on the team. <laughs> right? yeah. so, so, you know, you can get lost in that, in that, you know, in that and take it personal. Um, but I try not to. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, uh, so I, yeah, I think you did, uh, took that well, um, but B, um, everyone's got their own perspective and opinion. And even of the stuff here, like we joke about it now, but like his, his Highlander was not my favorite one he did. Yeah. That was a personal thing. It was in my experience, like having to, to pick something I thought was the weaker of the entries, right. had nothing to do with technique. I literally yeah. was like, this is literally subjective. This is yeah. my opinion of the piece. So when someone critiques your work, also understand that like, it is entirely possible for you to do everything correct technically, like from the, the painting foundation and someone just not yes. like it because they don't like it. Right. Uh, I think it's fine. I just don't like pink mechs and that's yeah. me. But <laughs> I will say that. And then there's like three other people in the forums that were love that thing. And I'm just like, so me basically letting them know like this one's weak for me because I didn't like the right. scheme, but it has nothing to do with the techniques yeah. important. So when you get that feedback, know that you may be doing something technically correct. Someone just literally may be like, I don't like Jay Turkeys because they're the worst clan and they just don't like the paint schemes because yeah. they don't like them. There's a bias there. So right. you have to know, like take grain of salt with every bit of critique you get. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's to me, um, everybody is going to like something more or less. Like my yep. brother, for example, loves the Crockett. Yep. Loves that. Right. Which my, I love, but there were some CSO people right. who didn't yeah, like they that. They didn't one. like it. Right. So my dad loves the Marauder. That, that was his, that was his boy was the Marauder. My, my favorite um, out of all of them is the Awesome. I think it's probably the best. I love red. Yeah. So Also, the, yeah. the composition yeah. of the photography on it, when that one goes live, um, I don't know if you still got photos on your Instagram or if you pulled that I pulled one. Them. Um, yeah. So once it goes live on um, CSO, uh, hopefully it'll be back up on Instagram, yeah. the composition, the lighting, where it is in the urban environment, it is so good. Like Everything about it comes together. Uh, where some of the other pieces I think are good, but this one, every checkbox got hit. Some of the other ones that hit most of them and they're good, but like that one down to the actual backdrop, everything's perfect. And it, it is my favorite one. And the more that I've looked at these, um, as much as I can't stand Jade Falcon and the um, um, John Deere paint scheme, like yeah. the, the green and the yellow, it just, it looks really good. I cannot like the the faction for the most part, but understand that the paint scheme looks really good. Yeah, I appreciate um, it. So yeah, but I think that you're right. The awesome is probably the, the, the best. Yeah, that, um, that, that one is my favorite. Um, I mean, terrain wise, the Marauder is my favorite. You like him over this guy? I do. Really? I do. Yeah, because, because um, so my favorite mercenary unit, even though I don't know if it's, you know, the best one or not, is, is Snorin's Irregulars. That's why I painted the, the Highlander. Mm. Because like, yeah, <laughs> some people are not a big fan, but I love Snorin's Irregulars um, just because to me, they're like their Battletech version of like uh, like Indiana Jones and like. See, you know, my thoughts so were you. Treasure hunters and stuff you pronounced like Wolf's Dragoons incorrectly. <laughs> 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 that's a thing yeah, with Battletech. Thing. <laughs> Much like uh, 40k, everyone's yeah. got their favorite Space Marine I, chapter. I think so. it was uh, Big Red actually on YouTube, and he like he, he's like I don't like Snores and Regulars. They just they don't they don't serve a purpose and, and something. I don't know. I don't remember the whole thing, but he just doesn't like them. Um, I like I the love, Franken Rifleman Archer thing, whatever yeah. that is, looks really cool. Yeah, I think it's really cool, but I just love, I wanted to do something a little bit wild um, because that's something else I think that's worth noting for CSO is that they want to see that you can do different colors, yep. right? And different patterns and different schemes, yep. right? So if you send like five Beta Galaxy Clan yep, Wolf they don't dudes, want that. they're going to be like, no, like, okay, cool. They you also don't want that. like, oh, I did uh, beige with gray for clan uh, or beta galaxy clan wolf then i did beige with gray for a different faction different faction yeah. uh, different faction but same paint style right. they want to see a variety so in this case yeah. the five that you have right here in the camera each one of those is a different color scheme right exactly yeah. um, and they're all painted a little bit different like like some of these are painted with acrylics some of these are painted with dare i say contrast paints out of an airbrush oh yeah so do it all the time you know stuff. right and yeah. and you know I like that that boy right there that that was legit bale red. It, obviously, it was pre shaded and yep. and, mm -hmm. and you know set up a little bit differently to, to bring out the the brights and the dark. Um, but that was shot. the foundation. How you right. would approach doing the contrast paints different than regular stuff. It's not actually that far different, but when you're going to use that transparent paint through the the pre shading is way yeah. more important. Um, but the the results show like there's there's a place for speed paints and if you use it uh, yeah. with a little bit of thought and not just one thick coat. You right. can do a lot of cool stuff with it. Yeah, some of, like same same with the. Uh, the Turquina that yeah. was also done with, I think that's Warpstone Glow, maybe. I don't remember. I know it's the same as you get to yeah. that eventually. Um, but that's standard acrylic. Yeah. Uh, this is a hybrid of two. Yeah. We, just, we talked about that off camera before. Um, but this is Skeleton Horde uh, contrast. It's pre shaded. Yep. And then I did, like I said, it's either XV88 or maybe it's Zandri yep. Dust um, for the camo. 
And then some of that darker brown into black that's coming through is the pre-shading. And I wanted to keep that because, you know, in the recesses, the light's not going to hit those areas yeah. as much. Um, and then the Highlander, um, that's acrylic. And I think that's Proacryl. I think they do a really nice pink. And that was what that was shot. It was like a magenta. So if you look at it. Yeah, I thought right, I saw so, that in the jet plumes. Yeah. So if you look at it, it's like a like a magenta kind of going into into a brighter pink, right? So like a top top down zenithal yep. on that one. So, and I think it, that's another, I think, interesting thing that you could do too, is you can do pre-shading. Because like, yep. like this dude is not really zenithal. He's just darkly pre-shaded yep. in the deep spots. Whereas that was a zenithal from top yep. to bottom, right? So um, something else that's cool that you can think about is like, there, there's more than one way to appreciate the model yep. to bring out the light in certain places. Um, so. Yeah, I think the thing that would be interesting um, to that topic is like you painting uh, your awesome this way and someone else painting it with the same scheme yeah. um, to achieve and how you guys approach it. And there's different ways to like quote skin a cat. Like yeah. uh, you both might be painting the same exact paint scheme, you know, you're doing some clamble stuff because Beta yeah. Galaxy is best galaxy. <laughs> uh, so yeah. everybody's, you know, doing that. Um, but the way that you get there may be different. And right. um, we don't have the minis up here right now, but when, when Eric first got here, we were talking about some stuff he's working on. And he had two different Beta Galaxy guys that he had here, and they looked different. And his process to getting to the end results were both different, just with his own. And he was finding yeah. a, a process he likes. And if you were to compare his process to mine, it's probably different, even though our results are probably 89% similar when they're done. Yeah. But how we get there is different. So right. um, there's no one way to paint stuff. It's uh, whatever's going to work for you. I mean, do you want me to bring? Do you want me to bring that out? Or, That's up or, to you. If you want to bring, I'm, yeah, I can, I can. We got a bunch of stuff on yep. here, but I can, I can briefly bring that out. Um, I know. Um, we talked about that with the uh, shadow cat as well yeah. between the two. So like it, we could probably even, yeah, probably shadow cat's probably best, best one to, to do that with since it's along the same line. Right. So yeah, I mean, they're all, this is the, the, out of the three, actually that's the second one. Cause I actually did this one first. Um, so they're all a little bit different. This is this is pre Sotar airbrush. And you'll right. notice uh, immediately. So, um, let's turn that just a smidge. Um, so like colors are slightly different. So he's a little darker than him. So he's a little lighter and then a little lighter. The process was a little different. Right. But I feel like these two for sure. There's improvement of this one. And this one's still perfectly fine. But you're refining your process here. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, this was this was pre Sotar and this is all by hand. Yeah. Where where these were you know mostly with an airbrush and then with a, a finer tipped airbrush, like I said, with the Sotar. And then I was doing some experimenting with that non-metallic metal. You know, um, we're, we're live right now. Yeah. Um, so, but uh, one of the things that uh, Mike, one of the guys is out here with us uh, was talking about um, was uh, large surface areas and things you might want to do. So yeah. it's a good place for freehand. But when we're looking at these, one of the things I think that makes uh, for the beta galaxy really drives it home is having the red accents on here. So he's got red and white stripes on the leg, which I think are good, and a little bit of red up here on the beige. And then the same on this fellow right here, especially looking down, you see the red here. I feel like I didn't have any thoughts on things for this one that would be yeah. good, but I feel like to Mike's point, you have such a wide open area yeah. here. Some extra red here would be good because you don't really see right. much from top down, which when you're playing a game, this is the direction you look the most. Right. Whereas these two, you definitely get more of that red and that accents, that beige. Yeah. That yeah. literally just popped here on the spot. Yeah. And there's a little bit here going right. around the, uh, the rockets, but this large area. Probably yeah. could stand for some if you were looking for improvements. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I, I think like I didn't have a chance. I was a little pressed for time um, to glaze in because this is right going into scarlet, mm -hmm. right? To kind of give you like you know when red hits like that sun in the middle of the day, it's going to be a lot brighter. It's yep. almost mm -hmm. like an orange, right? Yep. Um, so um, yeah, if definitely if I was going to do it over again, and I think I also would have put in, um, you know the the red and white stripes. Mm -hmm. I would have done the same thing on yeah, that the, as well um, if I had so some more time to do it. He's got the stripes on the um, Mad Dog here, but not him. And this, I haven't done this on mine, but if I was doing more Beta Galaxy, at least the white stripe for sure. I'm yeah. not 100% sold on the red. I don't hate it, but the white one you did on your um, on Mad Cats is my favorite. It looks, it's so good. Oh, the pinstripe. Yeah. So um, that's that's a little bit of a nod to um, um, yeah, when... So uh, while he's sucking here. Yeah. So that's a little bit of a nod to my grandfather and my dad's car restoration side gig. Um, so they've restored all kinds of cars. They got started with British cars, TR6s, yeah. MGs. Um, and then they, uh, they transitioned over to American muscle cars, yeah. specifically uh, 1963 to 1967 Corvettes. Yeah. So they were doing fiberglass work and, and body, like we talked about before, so part of my background. But that stripe that I do is a nod 
to the pinstriping that you see on the Stinger yeah. of a mid-year Corvette on the 1963 to 1967. So I tried to put a little bit of like my my pop and yep. my dad into into the work. Yep. So um, it like, looks good. It's my favorite of those. Event. There, yeah. like like, and it's got two. You've got like the, the white, the the line, and then another white, small white, exactly. white line. It looks good. The the white and red on the uh, Mad Dog's not bad. Just on this Mad Cat, for whatever reason, I just I think that that just pops. It looks really good. And then having him up as an example too. When we're talking about the red from the top. Right. Looking top down, you get more of that red. You do. This, this one on that surface is missing a little bit. Absolutely. Um, but yeah. still, having them all there, even though they were all painted different times, they still match. That's cohesive, even though there's slight yeah. variations. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, I think, too, like, in, in my mind, like, I'm going through a process, right, and we talk about that from an artistic mm -hmm. process. But I think also, um, you know, to get immersed into the lore a little bit, every pilot's going to have, right, their own flair. Yeah. Right? And that's that's why I went with that striping on... Uh, the red-white? Right yeah. on that Mad Dog or Vulture versus the striping on the on the Timberwolf was okay. These are two different dudes or girls or whoever they are. Yeah. Right. And and one of them, that's their vibe, and then the other person, yeah. that's that's theirs. So um, and it gives me a chance to kind of explore like as well. Yeah. On on what I like, what I don't like, what sticks, what doesn't. Yeah. Right. Um. So yeah. But yeah, you can see it's funny because like this, no no non metallic metal. And I don't think I'm ever going to do that that much. It's ever a pain again, in the butt. By the way, that, that it's good happen. for a piece, but not yeah. a whole army. No, it's too um, much. I hate doing it. <laughs> and then, and then going, you know, so that transition. Yeah. Yeah. But I appreciate it, man. I, I thanks for for saying that it yeah. looks that it looks cohesive. You know. So. Um, I think it's an important thing to bring up for for viewers yeah. because um, one of the things I struggle with is I'll paint a whole force at one time, and then if I come back to paint another one, I might struggle trying to match, so then I might not paint it. Uh, but if you do do that, you might realize that like your models are probably going to hit like 89% match. You might get yeah. 100 if you write it down, but if you don't, don't stress, paint it up and then put them on the table. And if there's any worry about it, just look at modern stuff. Like if a, a standard take's been to combat, a new one's fresh off the assembly line, one of those looks beat up and one doesn't. And that's, right. just the, that's just life. It is what it is. So if your models are 80 or 90% close to the previous one, it's probably all right. Because some of these guys have been in combat. This other one, maybe he's fresh. So right. don't stress too much. As long as you paint it, that's the important part. Yeah, yeah. And you're having fun, right? Yeah. I mean, that's yep. that's hopefully the, that's fun. right. <laughs> that's the beauty of it. Unless you're doing non-metallic so. metal, and then you're hating your choices. Mm, yeah, yep. uh, that's yep. true. Not gonna lie. <laughs> so uh, back to our previous topics. We were on this one. Uh, so we we're talking about your five entries for CSO. Yeah. I don't think we ever talked about like any things you did different on the resubmission, like initial critique. Like, oh, were you yeah, able we to say like yep. you talked about the uh, this fellow and right. him being uh, lower inaccurate and also the camo pattern. Right. But was there anything on the other uh, other models that um, they said that you were able to improve on for the resubmission? Because clearly your second submission was better yes. and got you through. So so I I labeled this dude. So the uh, awesome, mm -hmm. right? I thought that he was a uh, like a three KT, whichever the one is that has snub PPCs. All right, I remember right? this was a very small detail. Yes. Yep. So so because I was going, this is a dark age camo scheme or pattern, right? Because it's Dragon's Fury, right? So yep. dark age Dragon's Fury, um, and um, the guys let me know, hey, by the way, like it doesn't have a small laser on its head. For context, so, when he submitted, he said "awesome" and put the actual I model did. designation, like the actual specific mech variant. Yeah. Um, and had he not put that variant, this probably would have gotten the check mark up front because because he specifically said that variant, it needed to look like it. Um, but once you remove that tag, they definitely had an "awesome" of this type there, just not that specific type that he yeah, put. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, but then when I went back into master unit list, um, I could not find a standard "awesome" that appeared with uh, Draconis Combine and Dark Age. Maybe I was wrong. So, <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I'm looking at Mike off camera, like, like we, because he and I went through it together, and um, like that's that's where I was like, oh man, now I'm at an impasse, because I'm either going to need to get rid of that, shave it off, or paint it up, or kind of make it disappear, um, or I'm going to have to start with something else. And I was like, oh, I really don't want to start with something else. Yeah, on no. that one. I really love that one. So, um, so I ended up uh, reaching out to the to the guys um, specifically. Um, uh, I think it was Double O Dog. Yeah. At yeah, CSO. Matt, yeah. And, um, and I was like, hey, would you be okay with me just like graying it out and just pretending like it, there's a housing there, right? But there's nothing inside of it, yeah. right? No laser inside. He's like, yeah, that's fine. Just go for that. So yeah. that's, that's what I ended up doing for that. Um, we already talked about this, how I had to repaint the Zeus yep. into a Marauder, <laughs> yeah, yep. right? So, yep. mm -hmm. um, on the Highlander. Um, I think these are just mold lines. Yeah, yeah they're just mold lines. Um, I tried my best to remove them. I had to, you know, feather some of them out as well. Um, and um, for context, you know, for so people Photoshop. know um, when you're working on minis, um, 
the worst defenders that they're going to catch you on the CSO, yeah. they're really bad, are right here on the bottoms of the feet, yeah. um, which are easy to miss. This one's a little easier to get to. Uh, when you have models like the Turquina, um, when they're already affixed to the base and not up there, it's hard to get to. Yeah. A lot of times your basing covers it, but that's it's that little tiny bit here uh, that, if I recall, was pretty much your issue. Yeah, so so I played around with it and, and you know, got rid of them. Yeah. Um, so that, that was basically it on this one, I yeah, think. Yeah, I think that, that, I think that was it. They, yeah. I might not have liked the pink, but uh, the majority of them did, and it's like, cool. Like, I cannot like it, but I understood the pink job was fine. Like, technique-wise, yeah. it was good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think you're right. It's just the mold ones. Yeah, and I think for me, since since that, I wanted to do this, like I said, because Sonora's Irregulars is, is my favorite mm -hmm. Merc unit. No offense. Oh, you're and, fine. Uh, <laughs> I mean, nothing wrong with them. I got nothing against them. <laughs> uh, but also, um, you know, I was like, oh, man, I, I looked on CSO's website before I, I did all of this, and yep. I was like, what hasn't been done? And I wanted to kind of focus more on things that had not been done. Yeah. And, and that was like Rhonda Snord's Highlander was, yeah. was not, from, to my knowledge, was not on there. So that's yeah. that was one of the things I wanted to do. Um, on the Turquina, um, yeah, it was mold lines. When they yeah, reached yeah. out to me, it was mold lines. He, and specifically, he sent the 360 views. Yeah, I did. Yeah, mm -hmm. when I did the 360, there were a couple of mold lines on the back here that I had to that I had to correct or just simply send photos of the take front. Take a photo of the front <laughs> and leave yep. it alone. If you send so, more photos, they yeah. will critique all of them. But uh, if you send the best photo, um, that is what's going to get critiqued because that's yeah. what goes on the website. So remember that. Yeah, and then the, and then the Crockett was the same way. Um, they uh, had some issues on with that one. Um, I don't yeah. think you had to change. But uh, in terms of um, uh, critique from CSO, um, there were some guys that were less interested in the uh, actual paint, um, like the olive drabs. They felt it was too um, not contrasty enough. So when you're comparing to like this guy, you got like the bright green goes into dark into the recesses, um, or even this guy with like the the red transition to the bright red. This guy doesn't quite have it. Um, so there's some of them who didn't like it and some who did. I liked it because this felt more like, ger you know, generic military, hit it with a spray and go. It doesn't got to be fancy. It needs to work. Um, so that is why yeah. I liked it. And then also feel like the the lighter green, and you've still got the edge highlights on it, was just, it was a pale light green and it's, it just, it looks good. If you'd went with something more like, um, Foresty green, maybe would have got the contrast, but like I liked it, and that's one of those where when it comes to the critique from uh, CSO, some people are gonna like it and some aren't. So if there are areas for improvement, cool. But if it's just an artistic uh, taste, just take that with a grain of salt. Because I thought this was good, but some people didn't. Yeah, I love I, I love that model. Just I yeah. think it's really cool. Me too. Um, I, I don't even think I've ever played with one because I'm still pretty new to playing. Well, you're gonna see game. one today, I know, right? <laughs> the Crockett, and the Crockett, the Flashman, two of my favorite yeah. mechs. They look so, so cool. I love this dude just because like you've got those big lasers. You yep. got that big cannon. Right, you yep. could turn it into a shotgun and yep. shoot planes if you wanted to with it, <laughs> right? And and then you've got, you know, he's like walking up doing his thing, and he, you know, and then he SRM yep. twelves you in the face. So he's got so those like SRMs. Cool. You've got antennas on there, which is something you've added to a lot of these. We didn't talk about. It's a small detail. It's not required, but that does help with like CSO stuff if it looks like the art. Um, and then this guy in particular, the arms are a little different, um, but they're very cool looking. And then you got the little asymmetry with this cannon on the side. Like it just this mech checks a lot of cool boxes, and yeah. then. The canopy being kind of rounded, almost like an interesting helmet crammed down in the cockpit. It's just this mech looks really cool. If you have yeah. not looked at the Crockett on the Master Unit list, you should. Yeah. It's a, it's such a good mech. <laughs> he, he's I, I I have nerded out and done the Sarna, and I've read about this mech a lot. It is one of my favorite mechs yes. of all time because originally it was a trainer, right back it, from the story, right, and and it was so good. Now there's a quirk I think that at the head. I think there's some weird quirk with the head that like if you got hurt or something with the first ones it'll it'll kill you because it didn't eject properly or something uh, but apparently they fixed that and um it was so good as a as a trainer because it's so easy to use right because it only has like really three weapon systems that like it, it, you could use it really well on the field too yeah. so it kind of integrated into mainline servers yeah. and i thought that was really cool i can't think of off the top of my head about trainers like in the military but i'm sure there are like some other things like maybe planes or something in the military that like you know that you know, they were so good. People caught on like that with them, and then you know went the, into service. This is the only thing that comes to mind with that for me, and I don't know like how much that translates over. But I've watched some videos with like uh, fighter pilots, yeah, and the ones who use the fly by wire and the ones that fly by computer, yeah. and why the fly by wire is more important to them. It's a little bit different, but if they were training on the less sophisticated one, they may find that the handling was different than the computer. Yeah, um, and I don't think that the fly by wire has got everything that it needs, but for dogfighting, it did. Yeah, um, and that's the first, well, first and only thing that comes right. to my mind because that's the only thing I've watched on YouTube. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. So it's like it, it's it's cool. It's really cool. And yeah. I wanted to do SL. SLDF too, because it's like, you yeah. know, it's old school cool, right? Um, I haven't done SLDF, but that feels like one of those Battletech things where it's like Clan Wolf or Jade Falcon, which are two of the big clans. Like, yeah. everyone's got an SLDF, or they've right. got an excuse for finding a yeah. Lost Tech cache because yeah. 
It's SLDF. Right. It's a thing. Oh, which reminds me, the other thing that they mentioned was, um, and it was both of these actually. Um, so I painted the missile ports. Uh, yes, right? I forgot about this. Give me a so, so I painted them a different color. And in my mind, I was like, yeah, SRMs are yellow. I don't know why, but they are for me. Mm -hmm. And then LRMs are red. And uh, just like how they say large lasers are blue, mediums are green, and smalls are red. Well, um, it, they just said that uh, it doesn't really, um, it was too jarring of a look. Yeah, they. So, so you had, I think, yellow here? I did. I had yellow and in the ears. I liked the yellow because I feel like yeah. yellow next to green looks good, even though on this one I'll critique it. Um, yeah. whoops, I'm sorry, I'm messing your stuff <laughs> up. Good. Um, but on this one, I feel like that kind of pale yellow you had went really good with the green. Um, and then this one, did you have red in this one? I did. Yeah, so, I did. Um, I forgot you even changed that. I yeah. sure did. Sorry, I was all up in yeah. here. <laughs> no, no, you're good. Um, yeah, so, so that just, just plain black. And I mean, what we ended up doing is, is, you know, I remember you telling me, hey, just, you know, put some silver in there, kind of highlight where the, you know, where the holes are. Yeah, so like SRMs. if you've got like your SRM hole and you put your um, your black washer ink in there and then you put a like bright uh, highlight right here over that, um, this is where the light's going to hit. And yeah. I just put like a little butthole finger thing on there. <laughs> but same thing. You right didn't here. do the three fingers. I so didn't do good. that. But somebody's on there is like, Justin's over here talking about painting a butthole. No, but like right here, like if you make the silver, hit it with a wash, you get the black recess and then you come in on the bottom edge yeah. of that circle and highlight it and it's where the light source is going to hit. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, and that's, that's similar to how I did it on here. And you know, and then I did the like kind of almost like a non-metallic fade. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love the way you do rock the other rooms. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Yeah. So yeah. like, I uh, yeah, that that's it. So um, it's been a good experience. Yeah. You know, like uh, the guys are really good. Um, I think one of the coolest parts about this whole journey is really the people. Yeah. Right? Met so many cool people yeah. doing this stuff, and everyone's been really easygoing, um, and you know, welcoming. So you know. And that's part of it. Like, if it was stressful for me, I just quit. Yeah, honestly. there's no point doing it. Yeah. Like, you know, because you know, if everyone's going to be either be elitist or or they're just going to be a jerk, like I don't need that. Yeah. Like, I get enough of that at work. Yeah. So why why would I why would I do that outside of work? Yep. So, um, so for me, yeah, it, it's definitely been it's been a great experience. Met some awesome people through yep. CSO. Awesome people, like just through the stuff that gaming we've stuff. done mm -hmm. with gaming stuff, um, going to the conventions and stuff like that. And I will definitely. Um, Make it to to Nova. Yeah, that, that's great. Nova well. great. So also, gonna, I'm running battle yeah, Nova, so, so we'll do that. everyone who's watching should go. Um, <laughs> yeah. One of the, the topics we brought up as we feel like we're kind of naturally coming to a close here. Um, if you're interested in CSO, like if you made it to this point in the video, clearly enjoy whatever the heck we're talking about, or, or you're interested in the program or both. Um, if you're doing it just because you want CSO in a name, or you want to be able to sell models, it's the wrong reason, and you're going to get very frustrated with it. Um, if your justification is like the catharsis, that's great. You like to do art. Um, but more importantly, I think above all else, wanting to feel like you're having an impact on this IP. Uh, yeah. There's no other IP out here right now where you can do something like this and be a, a painter. Like if you want to do heavy metal for Games Workshop, good luck. Right now, it's very approachable to do CSO stuff, and there are opportunities as a CSO artist to do things for Battletech where you may not get paid, um, but you may have models you've done get into publications, and then 20 years from now, like there's there's friends I have that are into Battletech have been playing you know their whole life. They're 50 years old. They've been playing since the game came out or close to it. Yeah. <laughs> um, being able to look back at, at like now 36, when I'm 56, right now for me, I've got a, a model that's waiting to see if it gets approved with CSO. If that model gets approved, my name at the bottom will say canonized by and have my CSO name. And then forever and always, if someone goes to Sarna or they go to the Master Unit or Master Unit list, CSO or whatever, that paint scheme, I did it, I made it, and I put my stamp on Battletech. And that's really cool because I like this IP. With 40K, I can't make a Space Marine. I mean, I can make my own, but it's never going to be official. And in this way, you're able to do something that helps push the IP forward. And you yeah. never know that one piece you did that gets published in a thing that you feel like you've stamped the, the community with and left your mark. 20 years from now, there might be someone who's 16 years old. They walk into the Cyber Books a Million and they see this holographic display for Battletech minis. And then it's got your mini on the artwork or something like that. And they get in it like that one person, you did th a thing and it connected. And that's really cool to me. So leaving a legacy with Battletech and having your imprint, that is that is the whole reason to do it. Yeah. If it's for any other reason to just make money, like, no. Uh, you can you can do that on your own, but uh, if yeah. you're into it to help push the the IP and enjoy being integrated in it, and then enjoy the the stress release of it, that that's the way to do it. Yeah, yeah, I totally so. I totally agree, Justin. Yeah, I remember um, one of the first boxes I opened up, and like Bershito's, uh something of Bershito's was like right in the box. Yeah, it's like man, you get your you get your yep. artwork on the box, yep. right? And then same with your um, you did the beginners box, yep. right? So I'm hoping crossing my fingers that that your two models will end up being. Like the photos. That would be cool. The box. He's talking about, you're talking about. Um, Where is it? The, 
it was the the, uh, Wang. the essentials one, the yeah, Solaris yeah. ones. Sorry. I did the Legend Killer mm -hmm. and um, Yun Lo Wang's um, Justin, whatever his name is. Yeah, so Legend the Rifleman Killer. and the Centurion. I did both of those based off the artwork, yeah. And those yeah. are up on CSO now. Uh, but the box predated predated that. Um, but yeah. there's opportunities with CSO, like if um, CGL says, hey, we need some box art or some like art for like you know inserts or something, we know about it before the boxes come out, and you might have an opportunity to paint something. Um, and even if you didn't get to do something that went into that box, there may be a, a book later, like a TRO or a campaign book or something that your minis make it into. And that's really cool for me. Yeah. Um, like in my head, like there's a little hubris to it where you're really proud about it, but it's more like if the same reason I do YouTube, I don't make lots of money off YouTube, let's be honest here. But if this video right here inspires one other CSO person from our, our or one other person uh, yeah. from our conversation to submit to CSO and they get in, we helped inspire someone. Yeah. And then hopefully you go to do something to inspire someone else. So it's like kind of paying it forward type thing. And that's what's important to me uh, yeah. is just, you know, casting a positive light into the community for yeah. Battletech uh, relative to other games that don't have it. Yeah. Um, so I think that's cool. Yeah. Um, as we transition here, you've got a few models here. Do you want to talk about what you're currently working on yeah, before yeah, yeah. We, we exit here? Super so you've quick. seen his CSO submissions. We've talked about progress yeah, on yeah. his Beta Galaxy. He's got five other minis here um, that are things he may be submitting or one that's for another Patreon. Correct. So, so um, we'll do the ones I'm, I'm going to try to submit and then we'll move we'll on to the... To the one that I'm gonna give to a buddy of mine. So we're gonna try to do that Thor. Yeah, so right, I, I like so this this green looks a little darker than Turquina. The it does. The panels, there's not as big of a wide open area, but I really like this one because yeah. the green is much more subdued. Yeah, and this is really nice. I really, I really I did do some of the nom this one wasn't so bad, right? Because you have not as many places you gotta worry yeah. about with the non metallic metal. Yeah. Um, and then I really wanted to play around with this canopy. You know that pink into to bright blue transition. Yeah, looks really there. good. So I, I had a fun time with that, and the same with the with the pod there. So yep. yeah, I appreciate it, man. This one, this one's a fun one. And and he he found a uh, bushwhacker. bushwhacker. Poor bushy. <laughs> bushwhacker's one of my faves. Yeah, he stomped on a poor boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> That's um, also one of my favorite clan mechs too. The um, it is cool. the the Thor slash Summoner, Hellbringer slash Loki, uh, Timberwolf, and the Mad Dog. That's that's my four core favorites, which are all iconic. But, Almost anyone who's even taken a blink at Battletech knows what those mechs are. I mean, what what guy do you know that was Jade Falcon that had one of these? Oh, I don't know, Lord, because Jade Falcon doesn't matter to me. Cool. Who is it? Uh, is it Aiden? No, he had a Mad Cat. It was, it was Aiden. What oh. cartoon was it? Oh, was it this Battletech cartoon that I never watched? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dare refuse my bat shot. Malthio? Oh, I, don't, I didn't watch that show. Oh, okay, okay. That pre Man, I was watching <laughs> Malthus, Rugrats. Malthus, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we got that. Um, I may I may try to submit this at some point as well, um, but I may also put this in the bin for the next. Oh, uh, um, the grinder. Yeah, for the okay. grinder as well. So um, I was playing around with like a, a bronze or a copper non-metallic mm -hmm. metal on that one. Was this contrast paint or just standard blue? This was contrast okay. paint. I thought it might be. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so I, I recognized the blue color. Yeah. So that's why I thought is what it was. But it was a lot brighter. So what I did was I did a contrast, and I think it was Talisar Blue yep. from Citadel. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And then what I did was I varnished it. Yep. Um, and then uh, after I varnished it, I did a full top to bottom enamel wash on it, yep. which darkened the color. Yep. I guess that's something maybe worth quickly mentioning is that whatever color you're going to put on there for a contrast, or really any paint in general, right? You're gonna you're gonna shade it down by one or two yep. mm -hmm. levels. It's gonna be a little darker right? yep. when when you're done, um, because you can't just get you can't get the residual um, uh, enamel off of it. Yep. It will shade it. Um, but then the rest of it, you know, like the striping I did on it, yeah. um, that's acrylic. Yeah, has standard to be. acrylic, right? Because yeah, then you'd be putting yeah. contrast over blue, and it exactly. wouldn't look right. It's not so gonna work. The contrast yeah. is really good for the initial base coat and then glazing. Mm -hmm. But once the ba once your base prime is covered, you're gonna have to go back to acrylics. Exactly. So so I did that, and then the standard acrylic on the, and this isn't really copper. This is like different shades of reds and oranges yep. mm -hmm. building up right into an ice yellow and a white, right? Yeah. So um, trying to do like. Like the cover art, right? Yep. It's mm -hmm. the game of armor combat. Yeah, Hans Dahlgren, right? I think. Yes. Yep. So um, this guy as well is something else that I'm. That I'm Wasn't he to. a submission you were toying with before? Yeah, I, I loved it this was. guy. Yeah. I don't know why you didn't do it, but I, I just the, the I'm a sucker for gray, and it's got dark gray with the blue, and <laughs> yeah. it's just and then the green cockpit. It's like it's checking all the boxes yeah. for me. You know why I didn't submit it? I don't remember because I suck at photos. Oh, <laughs> so, um, I, I couldn't I couldn't figure out for the life of me because. White and black is so hard to photog yep. you know, or to do photography on. Yep. So um, all the photos I tried to do, I tried to sharpen it. I tried different focal lengths. You name it, I tried to do it, and and for whatever reason, I couldn't. So that's one of my projects this year is to get better at photography. Yep. I mean, I'm, I'm halfway decent. Well, I mean, in like you know? two month period, you've went from like uh, amateur to pro level looking stuff. I like it. just it took. 
Um, so he had a, a meeting with my boss to give him some feedback on things he could do. Yeah. He went and got the equipment, which is not the same for everyone. Not everyone can just go buy this stuff, but he got the flash photography. And then from there, he's just been fine tuning. And it went from mm -hmm. like pretty good to like real good, real fast. Yeah, I appreciate um, it. But I also had a lot of help from, from you. Yeah, Faith and Heresy on Austin. Instagram too. I, that's exactly what I was going to say. So yeah. Faith and Heresy. I don't know his real name. I do, but I'm not going yeah, to drop you. <laughs> yeah, we've shipped him yeah, some stuff a, from DRD. <laughs> yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. He's a character. So he helped me a ton. Yep with this as well so he's uh, also very good if you're interested in getting into cso and wanting to just talk to someone obviously you can message me you can message eric on instagram uh faith and heresy is really good he spoke to me before he submitted and got feedback and i basically gave him like real nitpicky critiques because he asked for it but they were all bs because his stuff was great yeah. um and then papa chicken um i don't know if he's got instagram i feel like he does but like he's in discord and like he's a really approachable guy too and fun to talk to uh and he's one of the guys at cso that might not be as public with things he says but he does a lot of painting and a lot of like uh, canonizing of schemes, and he's the reason that I tried to make the or paint the canonized thing for the cheetahs because he was like, "Hey, this is a thing you could do. Why don't you do it?" And I'm like, "Okay." Yeah. Um, yeah. And then back on topic for you, Minnie. One thing I will recommend for anyone who's watching, uh, if you're on the fence and you haven't painted yet, and you're just like really like excited about painting, um, this is cliche, but you should buy a Mac hat and paint it. It is probably the best example of things to paint for BattleTech, not just because it's iconic, but because the details it has. It gives you a lot of areas to practice on. Yeah. So like. It's got good canopy area mm -hmm. for doing the jeweling on the glass. It's got areas for freehand. It's got like good panel lines. You've got your LRM racks. You've got square shapes, round shapes. It has everything on one mini to give you a canvas that is indicative of a lot of the shapes you'll see in Battletech, and it's iconic. Uh, and if you did not enjoy painting about or painting the Timberwolf, then you, Battletech might not be for you. Um, <laughs> but it is. It is literally the yeah. is the first page of the Battletech coloring book. I'd recommend that you grab. So it's uh it's and it's on the cover yeah. of Mech Warrior Five yeah. plans coming out. I don't know when that comes out, but it's supposed to be coming out this year as well. Yep. It's like, to me, the, the iconic mechs that exist within Battletech are this dude right here. Yeah, everyone knows Mac right? You don't even have to know Battletech, yeah, you know the Mac Exactly. Cats. That, um, maybe depending on your age, the right. Marauder, and then absolutely the Atlas. Yeah, everyone knows I don't Atlas. have an Atlas painted. I, yep. I'm slack and I need to do that. Yeah. So, but those those are yep. kind of my everyone knows that I can Atlas. think of. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so I will take photos of him. I think I will be submitting him yeah, at some he's point so, too. So good. And then like as you, he's got two more models to go. I just want to say one more thing. Um, so I like the the gray or uh, almost black with the blue. But also this is one of those times where like the yellow with the blue and the the gray. It just it, it is everything there is really good. And then your cockpit choice, the color matters. Um, and I think yeah. in this case the green was a good juxtaposition to everything else here. Blue would have probably looked fine, but it would have been just too much blue. Your canopy is one area to splash color, and it could be vastly different, and it's still going to look great. So, like, when you're looking at this guy, uh, he could have totally done, like, a red canopy, but then it kind of feels like Christmas if you're looking at it there. Yeah. But that purple and blue are, are kind of pink into blue. With the green, it just it works good. So when you're doing your canopies, don't be afraid to try different stuff. Um, and then one last guy, because this guy's got the same thing. Like, yeah. that, that canopy juxtaposition of the green is just is perfect. So, anyway, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not perfect. Um, but yeah, la la last but not least, so um, I'm also a Patreon supporter of this uh, gentleman called MechFrog, and he, yep. he does a lot of um, like, uh, uh, not lore, what do you, what do you like, uh, fan uh, writing? What is that Fanfic? Called? Fan fiction, there okay. we go. Um, and uh, this is like the camo scheme that he puts on all his models when he plays. Um, so it almost kind of has like a, a Spinacane vibe yep. going on right from, from C Fox. Um, but it's it, he loves Jade Falcon. He's a huge, huge Jade Falcon guy, um, and uh, I'm trying to put something together for him. Um, take some photos, and um, I don't even know what galaxy uh, he considers this. Um, but you know, maybe it's somewhere down the Mike, pipe. Mike, do you know what that's supposed to be? Maybe Iota. So maybe. Iota. Um, so if that's something that we don't have as well on the website. Yeah. maybe something I kind of wander into. Yeah, I mean, if it's official well. like that, like anything I do commission-wise for people like Yin Lo Wang uh, and his um, Centurion and then the, the Legend Killer, uh, those were both commissions for me. And uh, knowing that took commissions, I told the guy, like, I'll send them to you when they're done, after they're accepted. And then the Yin Lo Wang um, CSO took a little while to uh, approve, and I wasn't sure it was going to get approved. And I was like, hey, man, I'm sending you a thing. It's been like three weeks. I don't know. I don't want to keep you waiting. And then like two months later, uh, I get a, a message from, I think it was Faith, uh, who saw that uh, it was posted on CSO. I was like, oh, hey, I didn't know. Um, but anytime I get a commission, if it's for something that could be official, I will try and uh, paint it up and submit it because if I'm painting it, I might as well make it official if I can. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yep. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, I love your work, man. I mean, that's one of the main reasons why why I, I started pushing in this direction too because yep. I remember all the tutorials that you put out um, 
and just the guides and just the vibe in general. Like, you know, because there's so many other YouTubers out there that like, you know, they, they, they're good, but, um, yeah. what am I trying to say? Like, you know, when you meet your heroes, <laughs> I don't think anyone's hero. I think the, the way that I would, uh, surmise so. things is when it comes to, uh, YouTube personalities is, um, not everyone is everyone's cup of tea and that's okay. Uh, for me, uh, the good example that I give is, um, when it comes to like 40K, there's some YouTube channels that are all about just stomping, stomping someone's face in the dirt uh, for uh, competitive things, and I don't like it. Content might be good. Their tutorials yeah. for painting might, might be good. The vibe I get is just not for me. That doesn't mean they're wrong. It just means that's not the content for me. So there may be different Battletech channels that do similar things to what I do, but if your vibe uh, jives with them more so than me, that's cool, and if more so with me than them, that's cool too. Uh, I'm not here competing to take anyone away. It's just, you know, for me, broadcasting a light into the... the the ether to uh, hopefully yeah. catch the people and you know get them into yeah. a happy mood. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah, like I appreciate it, man. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. Well, so, so here's here's where we're at. Yeah. I've been painting for twelve years, and he's been painting minis for a year and a half. And a year and a half from now, he's gonna be painting better than me, and that's gonna frustrate me. And I gotta get <laughs> I better. About that. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> um, so, but that's 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 the goal. Uh, if I ever meet any of you guys at like a, a convention or something, which I had happen at Adeptcon last year, I had a few people come up to the booth and they knew me. Uh, from the channel, and then I don't know them because I don't know names. Um, but if someone ever came up to me and was like, "Hey, I want to show you this stuff. Can I show it to you and at, at a con or something?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." And they'll be like, "Hey, like you inspired me to do this." And then if I legitimately look at it, I'm like, "This is good. Holy crap, this is better than mine now." And you're like, "Yeah, that's I started because of you." Then yeah. I feel like I did something good, and I, I take like a half of a half of a percent of credit for for everyone's work now. <laughs> it's like I'm in well, like a, pir a pyramid Ponzi scheme for everyone's painting. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, some of you is here. If you think about it, right, like the way the way that I do these uh, canopies with, you know, pre-shading the canopy, yep. right, putting the bright spot in the dark spot, yep. like like this, this here was that, yeah, that was that, that. I'm pointing at things off the camera. Yeah, the green that, uh, Mad Cat's very similar you know, to the stuff that I do, so, and these so, are very similar too. Because I yes. think I did something similar on my Jade Falcons. I think they're blue into purple. Or yes. Yeah, blue into purple. Yes. Yeah. So so you know, and that's that's the cool part I think to me one of the coolest parts yeah right you're putting a little bit of yourself out there yep. and that little bit of yourself is is traveling on with somebody else yep. too and so. uh, we've been saying we're closing for like 20 minutes or something yeah. but uh <laughs> one of the things that eric has done um that i struggle with because i paint really slow um every one of the people i've been around that he's friends with that i'm in the same room with at some point i've watched him give them minis um when you gift someone a mini that you painted for them um like the way that I view that, the same way that I, I view gifting somebody something. So for Eric, let's say he gives me a Mad Cat, which he did, and a Dire Wolf, which he did. Um, and let's say that took him 10 hours a piece to paint. In my head, I immediately go, okay, 10 hours at X probably dollars an hour for what he would be paid. This is the value that he has converted this into and he's given it to me. So like your time at work is converted into money. And if you make $150 a day and you give that to someone, you gave someone eight hours of your life. So if Eric goes, Justin, this mini is cool, I can extrapolate what that value would be in his life, and he's taken a piece of it and given it to me, and he can't get it back. Like, yeah. you can spend money, you can't get time back. So when someone takes the time to paint something for you and give it to you, it's not just the money, it's not just the piece, it's the fact that, like, if you could carve off a little sliver of someone's life and put it into something physical, they right. handed that to you. Exactly. And that's why, like, when someone gives me yeah. art, whether it's, like, a new artist or a, a veteran artist, like, or anywhere in between, you still give me time regardless of that quality. And I think that's very important. So if you're painting something for someone, start thinking of that. Or if someone gives you something and you exactly. feel like you might not be appreciative, try and go the extra mile to thank them. Because like they did, they gave you, they gave you a piece of themselves and they can't get it back. And I think yeah. that's the personal part or personal touch of what art is. I, so. I totally agree with yep. you. Yeah. Anything else you want to say to people out there while I got you on the camera for um, people wanting to do CSO, wanting to do art or anything? I mean, I, I think just going in with... Um, the like a humble heart yep right going in wanting to learn um going in you know not thinking that you're you're the greatest thing yep. ever it's always right? a bigger fish and, and there's always going to be something worth learning yep right and um you know also be aware that like you know the stuff that you do and the stuff that you say on social media right as well as the other things that you do like in discord or yep. all those places like first of all people are watching yep right yep. so so if you're if you're a jerk inevitably and you're, and you're applying to CSO somebody's gonna find out yep. right somebody's gonna see who you really are yep. um, but also you know that that shouldn't be going on anyway right yep. and I think yep. to me it's like you know, going in with a good attitude um, and a willingness to learn and yep. just being good to people and being helpful to other people yep. is is very very valuable right yep. I think so. uh, to um, add just a little smidge that 
uh, think of it as a team. Uh, and would you want to be on a team with you uh, and be honest about it uh, with the way that you conduct yourself? And that's important. So yeah. like you may be the best artist in the world, but if um, no one in, in the team wants to work with you, that's a, that's a negative and that will, that will get you denied. Uh, so be humble, you know, watch what you say and do it on social media. And if you do submit uh, and you get declined, don't freak out. I know it's going to suck. It sucked for me too. Um, but the last thing you want to do is go to, <laughs> yeah, the last thing you want to do is go to uh, social media and rage. Yeah. Um, because part of the CSO thing, and anyone you talk to is probably going to say the, the same type of thing, um, they want to see how you respond to critique, and essentially that response is how they're going to gauge how you w would work as a team with them. If you handle the critique very poorly and you rage out, that's probably indicative of how you would integrate as a team with them, and then they, they're judging you based on that. So um, take it on the chin and uh, try and improve where you can. And if you feel like you've done the best thing, um, you know, take photos, resubmit, whatever, and justify what you've done. Because, again, um, some CSO artists who may have the time to go to the forums and, and vote on your stuff may have one opinion where someone else has a different one. So you don't know everything that's going on behind the scenes. So, um, you know, be aware of all that stuff, dude. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good stuff, so, man. Uh, yeah. That said, I think we've covered just about everything. Yeah. So I appreciate yeah. you coming out to be on the channel. <laughs> Thanks for having um, me, man. For everybody that yeah. is uh, out there watching, uh, should yeah. be some links down below. So I'll get um, a Suge's Instagram. Yeah. Go give him a follow. I think it's important we've got uh, someone on the channel or their art to give them uh, uh, some, some time to shine. Uh, Faith and Heresy. Um, I think that's his Instagram. If not, it's Warrior Soul, but yeah, I think Warrior it's still uh, Faith yeah. and Heresy. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about Papa Smurf. We talked about Brushito. We talked about Red Piano. And then uh, Mech Frog. Yes. So I think correct. that's six. I'll try yeah. and remember to get all those. If not, uh, you're hearing this, so type it up. Check yeah. them out. Show them some love. And if you happen to go over there because you saw this video, tell them we sent you. So yeah. um, that said, if you guys uh, as well happen to jump into painting or have any endeavors going for CSO or otherwise, Sign up in the comments. Um, we're link friendly. If a link doesn't come through, I'll try and get on the back end and approve it because sometimes the, the algorithms and whatnot or the, the bot, not bots, the, the uh, auto sifting will be like, oh, this is spam. Uh, but we want to see what you're working on. Uh, whether you're applying for CSO or not, uh, seeing your art is important and throw it in the comments. Uh, and uh, Eric follows like every mech thing on Instagram. I do. And anytime I see someone with a mech thing on Battletech that comes across Instagram, I hit follow. So yeah. uh, I think it's important to get involved in the community and we like to see what you're working on. Absolutely. So, uh, that said, yeah. again, Eric, thank you for coming out. Thanks for having me, dude. Thank you for yeah. everyone who's watching. And if yeah. you enjoyed this, uh, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. As always, mm -hmm. keep uh, rolling your dice and painting your models. And uh, we will catch you guys next time. Yay! <laughs> if you made it this far, you're probably a viewer that already hits that like button when you see a video come up. You're probably already a subscriber and you probably jump into the comments down below to help support the channel, to help support that algorithm. But if you're looking for some other ways to help support the channel too, make sure you check the description down below. Maybe you want to pick up some paints from Monument Hobbies. That's my paint of choice. The Pro Acrylic line is chef's kiss. Good stuff. Maybe you want to check out some of the offerings from Death Designs where I work in my day job. We got plenty of 3D printed uh, products as well as MDF terrain. Some of the stuff that I have designed myself and we play with here on the channel. And if you're looking to bolster your Battletech uh, ranks, miniatures, and offerings, make sure you check out uh, Bobby from Fortress Miniatures and Games. He's one of the main supporters of the channel as well. And supporting any of these companies helps support what I do and helps to ensure that I can continue to bring content to all of you. If you want to become a super supporter, I highly recommend you guys check out the Patreon. You guys get the extra little edge to help push more content out, and I really do appreciate that. And my ultimate goal on the channel is to continue to be able to not, put, not only put out the content we have now, but to get to a point where you can put out more content later, whether that be battle reports or painting tutorials or just more rambles, anything at all. I'd like to be doing more content for you. This is something that I enjoy. I like being able to cast a light into the darkness to bring a little bit of hobby positivity to all of you and make you feel good and also enjoy playing games myself. As we do the final sign off here though, I do want to go ahead and switch on over and do the, the scroll of awesome to showcase all the Patreon supporters, the super supporters of the channel to give them some recognition for helping support what I do. Thank you guys so much and I will catch you guys next time. Thank you.